In this video, I'm going to talk about how to interpret XRD data or graph of your research article. When you are writing your research article, how to interpret XRD plot. It is one of the key characterization in your research and you need to write about in your uh, research article. This is for example the graph we plot intensity versus um, 2 theta. Uh, let's give me first of all uh, a brief introduction that why we need to do these characterizations. For example, you are working in a material and you want to know that either this material is a crystalline or a marpus. For example, if it is a crystalline, so crystal mean that atoms, those atoms are arranged in a periodic order. So it will give us a different peak. For example, if a material is a crystalline, so it will give a sharp peak. So you can easily understand when I see the XRD graph, so I can see that this is crystalline or amorphous. I will explain in the next video what are the differences between amorphous plot and, and, and crystalline plot. Now, all solids are not crystalline. Some are uh, possesses uh, irregular order of the interior atoms in that we call amorphous. Here you see. Now, once you get your XRD data, for example, when you give your material to the XRD machine, so they will give you two files. One, they will give you this file in MS Word. So you can see the material name, uh, the place name, and this is the graph you see here. Uh, you can see uh, uh, all the information here, and this is another graph they have, and uh, the peaks are automatically indexed that uh, this 2101 peaks are lying in this 2 theta, and etc. Let me explain to you here, and this, it will also give you the graph here, the, the table here. Uh, the, in this 2 theta, uh, two theta angle, the d spacing is this much, and the uh, pull width half maxima is this much. And the 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 the, the, the peaks, uh, the, the plane, the HKL value are here, and it will also give us the second file, and that is uh, in Excel. This is the two theta, and this is the intensity. So if you do not like these graphs in in MS Word, the ready-made graphs, these graphs, so you can use this Excel data to plot by yourself in the origin. Okay. Now let's go and see how uh, uh, we index uh, these XRD data. So once you get the XRD data, the results we match with the existing GC, JCPDS file. This is all periodic table elements. They have a proper uh, number and they given the proper number. This means the Joint Committee on Powder Depression Standard, G JCPDS. We compare our peaks our 2 theta d value with the standard value if it is matching for example i am working in pure tenoxide when i compare my xrd data with the standard with the standard jcpds value if it is matching then i am pretty sure that i synthesize my desired uh, material look now and this j this j is this JCPDS is nowadays called International Center for Depression Data, ICDD. So currently it is called like this. Let me give you a brief overview here. For example, if you are working with composite material, right? And you say that there will be more than one crystalline material. For example, your host atom is zinc. And you know zinc has a proper arrangement such as cubic or hexagonal, okay? such as cubic or hexagonal and you want to dope or bring some foreign atom make a composite of titanium and acid so it may or may not substitute the zinc atoms for example if the zinc atom and titania or acid have the same atomic size so it will cause no problem but if it is not substitute so it will make interstitial uh, doping and it will de deform the host uh, atoms, so the host material. So it may cause an additional p phases in XRD, or you will see variation in the uh, peak uh, position of XRD. So from this kind of thing, you can easily uh, uh, understand that 
whether my peaks are disturbed or not. For example, I told that every material has their standard uh, uh, value of D and planes or everything. Now, if you are doing doping or you making composite and you know the pure zinc oxide or zinc XRD data and when you incorporate these atoms uh, in the zinc and you see some variation and some uh, uh, other peaks so you can clearly say that a composite is formed very very clear so let's go now to the real scenario and uh, how I uh, write my XRD uh, 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 data here in my paper okay look now the phase purity and crystallinity of the pure SNA2 and TSL treated electrodes were examined by XRD depression figure 3. You see, because I am not giving the name of the XRD machine because I already given this in the synthesis and characterization part. But this is a result in discussion. You have to direct attack. So in figure 3 is below. The crystal structure of SNA2 multiforce nanofiber is tetragonal with space group this. I, I told this given the space where the latest parameter are this in this the values made precisely with the standard data jcpds card number i told you remember i told that uh, all these things have uh, their value all xrd pattern reflect the existence of pure sn2 peaks however new peaks emerge in the composite architecture evidencing presence of titania i told you before you see so this is how you write and you just <laughs> write all about this and we are I also mentioned here that there are some rotile phases occur because of the titania uh, composite furthermore an additional NRTS peak this at this two theta was also observed due to the excess titanium particle formation at this molar concentration the reference XRD pattern of the FTO we also give the reference uh, uh, XRD of the FTO here because FTO is also contained 10 SN so we, you see all peaks are matching here but some additional peaks in the higher concentration is appearing here this one here you see in one this one here you see so it giving you the information that whether your material is in original form or whether it changes from its uh, original form it may composite or not or also it's also talk about the crystallinity whether the crystallinity is increasing or decreasing so basically XRD give you so many things but for this time uh, it tells you whether your material is crystalline or not crystalline and it tells you whether you achieve your desired material or not. For example if you are synthesizing tin oxide or zinc oxide and you get the XRD data and when you match it with the standard and it's not matching then who can accept this? People will say that it is not zinc or it is not tin because it is not matching with the standard value. So I hope it works. In the coming videos, I will make it more and more clear. Before that, I just want to add that there are four basic things in XRD data. That is the D value and the full width at half maxima, peak intensity and peak width. We will explain that what are these parameters and how it affects your results. Thanks for watching.